Hi, my name is Larry. This is my DCOMP 2022 online presentation on testing text editors and IDs for the D language. The subtitle was my reaction when I realized just how many there were. Being a longtime daily reader of the DLang forums, I've noticed that new people often ask what is the best editor to use. The usual answers are a Visual Studio Code, someone's other favorite editor, or check out the text editor page on the DLang's website. I'm going to attempt answering this question, hoping to supply a more complete answer and benefit new D users. What I'm going to talk about is what is expected from text editors for the D language. Text editors and IDEs that work on Windows and or Linux. Fortunately, I don't have a Mac. We'll cover all the text editors and IDEs on the DLang website, the ease or difficulty of configuration or plugins required, whether the user can edit C and C++ files also, whether the user can edit multiple files at the same time, whether code completion and call tips are available, whether debugging or an internal terminal is available, whether Git or other source control integration is possible, whether it's possible to run compiled executables from the menu, whether it's possible to compile the current file from the menu, and whether it's possible to build a multiplied project from the menu. And I'll summarize all this information at table at the end. So who am I? I've been a long time user of uh, D and uh, I've been following the D forums for a long time. I'm not very well known in the D community because I've only been to one conference and I don't post on the forums very often. But basically all you really need to know is the first statement and the last statement on this slide. So basically I'm not a programmer, a systems analyst or a software engineer. I've never worked uh, as a programmer. I followed a different career path for 20 or so years and then I started of my retired and now I'm fully retired and basically a hobby programmer who uses mainly D and a little C. As you can see, I like bullet list. However, I'm not going to read each bullet from now on, but please still read them at your own speed and pay attention because there may be a quiz at the end. So what do we expect from programming editors? There are simple basic text editors without built-in line numbers or syntax highlighting like Nano on Linux or Notepad on Windows are not editors normally used in programming. Code editors, I like to call them, are just text editors that have built-in line numbers and syntax highlighting. And one or more of the following inverted step pyramid I built here, all the way up to an integrated development editor or IDE. The more of these items that the uh, text editor has, the closer it is to being an, an integrated development editor. And IDEs usually have the last four items on here from build projects to integrated debugging. Code editors end here and after are all the word processes with fancy formatting stuff that code writers don't usually use. Some code writers also have macros, bookmarks, markdown, preview, new file templates, mini maps, and uh, many other things that are not really essential for programming for most programmers, although some programmers really like them. First, I'm going to talk about ones that are no longer available or usable to a certain extent and I'm just going to mention them. The reasons why they are no longer usable or for programming D language code are listed on the slides. I will not be talking about them because I only have 30 minutes. They are basically Atom, DE, and Mono Development with the Mono D plugin. Here is a screenshot of Zamarian Studio on Windows, which is basically Mono Development version 5.10 on Linux, except for the branding. The story goes that from the later of versions 4 through the early version 6, Zamarian bought the rights to Mono Development on Windows. Then Microsoft bought Zamarian, and now it is rumored that it released this as the Visual Studio for the Mac. And then we're going to talk about code editors are only used for the D language, but I'm going to start with just the ones that I'm going to call ed uh, legacy editors. Michael Parker showed the first two at the D Conference 2022 presentation on the history of D. All are Windows only because D1 was at the time was Windows only. Again, press for time. I'm just going to mention them, but leave the information on the slide for you to read. So the first two is Decode and, and the Entice Designer. They were both developed by uh, Christopher Miller. And this last one is DID, which was developed by Alexander, both. And here's a screenshot of DIDE. As you can see, it's like a lot of the other window products at this time with a ribbon menu. I have all three of these in my software archive. I just bring this up to the illustrate that there are people who early in D development knew that 
WD needed a dedicated editor for programmers to use. So then we're going to move on to the editors and IDs that are built specifically for D and don't generally code other languages. The first one we're going to talk about is Poseidon D, which is being updated and maintained by a person that developed a free basic IDE from the original Poseidon D because the original free basic IDE was not being maintained and actually the Poseidon D was being maintained at all. As he improves on the Poseidon FB, which is the free basic one, he also has been improving and maintaining the Poseidon D editor. The latest version has a runtime error on Windows, unfortunately, but the older version I have does work. There is no provision for using dub and no menu item for a terminal. Has compile file and run executable menu items. There is code completion, call tips, go to definition, and symbol generation. The default debug option is just a G, but the normal G, but you can create a custom compile configuration if you want to. The build option compiles every D file in a folder separately and links them into an executable with the same name as the project, much like make does, but it doesn't use dub. The debugging would not work on Windows or Linux, and here's a screenshot of Poseidon D. This is the Linux version. You can see it has a pretty good uh, symbol generation. This one's on Linux, which is actually an uh, app image. What next one we're going to talk about is DLang IDE. This is written in D for D using the DLang UI, which is a D binding for the IUP graphics library. You can download the latest version uh, for Windows, which is 0.8.5 as a binary on the GitHub release page. However, you must build it from source from Linux using Using dub is the best option. The Linux build has a bug that can usually be fixed by setting the DPI to 96 in the options menu. There is no code folding, however. One can run the executable with run DMD. There's new project and workspace dialogue using dub. Build and run is in an external terminal. Automatic code as you type code completion. Go to definitions work and function call tips work via shortcut key, but they don't work via the menu. Debugging did not work compiling with DMD or LDC. The error breakpoint binding error no symbols have been loaded was the result. And here's a screenshot of delaying IDE. This is the opening screen. As you can see, the first thing it does is check to see if, if the compilers are available and what the include imports are. You'll notice that the GDC compiler is not found, and that's because this is a Windows version. I don't have that particular count, uh, compiler on the Windows. The next one we're going to talk about that are built just for D is DEX. There are setup, dub, RPM, and binary packages for Linux on the uh, release page, but you have to build your own for Windows or download it from the GitLab app there within one month of a new release, which hasn't happened in a little while. The terminal does not work or open from the menu item, probably because the Linux I used does not have VTE2 or GTK2 because they're no longer available and they're out of date. When building a dub project, the project would not build, and I got a dub error with an exit status of 127. However, the dub did work when executed from an external terminal opened in the project folder outside the IDE. When the debugger is started, it first immediately runs to the end of the program without stopping at any of the three bug points I set. I've had this happen in another IDE because I was using the normal dash G uh, debug compile switch instead of the dash GF compile switch. Unfortunately, I could not find any way to change the default debug settings in this IDE. Everything else that was claimed to be working worked very well. And this is a screenshot of it. As you can see, it again has symbol generation and a mini explorer and a project inspector, several other panels, and the message panel at the bottom basically says that we built and, and ran the executable successfully and found the precision of 25 digits for pi. So now we're going to talk about some other code editors that are, have built-in support for D. However, they were started as uh, text editors for other languages, many other languages actually, but they do have uh, built-in uh, support for D. A D, which includes syntax highlighting and code folding, built in for D and many other programming languages. The first one is KWrite, and it happens to be Linux only code editor. You can only edit a single file per window. There's no tabs or split windows. You need to open an external terminal in the files folder to use dub or compilers. XEd is also a Linux only editor. There's no internal terminal or menu to open an external terminal, and there's no external tools that can be configured. 
The C tags plugin only works for C files. There's another one that's called Code that I have only seen on Arch Linux distributions. It has no code folding or code completion, but it does have Git integration. The internal terminal opens in the current file project folder and can be used to run, build, or clean the project using dub or compile a file using DMD, LDC, or GDC, or run the executable. The document is auto-saved after every change, so no one ever needs to save the file. You don't ever have to press Control save It's really a good editor for the edit, compile, and run cycle. The last one on this slide is Site, which is available in both Windows and Linux. The D syntax highlighting and code folding is available, but it's not on by default. To use it with D, the little D in the exclude list near the end of the global prop properties file needs to be deleted to enable the included D properties file. Some of the defaults in the D properties files needs to be updated. Fortunately, the D properties file and actually all the property files are easy to edit in text format and can be opened from the options menu. Here is a screenshot of code. As I said, it's only I've only seen this on my desktop Arch Linux computer. But basically in the terminal, you can see that we compiled the file and ran it with 25 digits of precision. Carrying on, we're going to talk about code editors with only one D plugin. And basically they're identified by the plugin that's used. The first one we're going to talk about is the Visual D plugin for Visual Studio, which comes with the Windows installation of DMD. It has everything you'd expect from an IDE except the only menu item to run the compiled app is to run without debugging, which closes the terminal after the console app ends, unless you keep the app open with the well-known get car function hack. And it has no terminal to run OS commands or external programs from. However, it uh, has everything else a good ID has, including it's one of the better debuggers. And of course, it has highlighting and code folding. The next one is TextAdept. Its plugin is called TextAdept. D. If one clicks on the preferences menu, they get a blank default in it Lua file where default commands can be entered to the user's preference if they know how to program in Lua, which I don't really know. The TextAdept plugin is easy to install and it runs DCD for code completion, call tips, symbol generation, and go to function definitions. This Plugin runs D scanner for syntax checks and style checks when the file is saved in D format to format the file by menu or keyboard command. It was necessary to alter slightly the textadep.d in that Lua run command so that it ran the compile that I, that I wanted, which was a debug compile, and then run the executable. So here's a screenshot of textadep, which as you can see is a pretty standard text editor with all the necessary features. The next couple words we're going to talk about one of them is Sublime Text, uh, and this is going to be with DKit. One has a choice of D plugins, and I have used DKit plugin for years, but there's also the well known code D for Sublime Text. DKit hasn't been updated for a while, I assume, because you know, I can't update it. DKit enables code completion and call tips that are automatic most of the time. You can go to definitions using uh, F12 or from the menu. It includes snippets and build commands already configured. There are build commands using run DMD, DMD, and dub, but there are no release build commands. You can list all the build commands by typing build in the command palette. There are actually quite a few of them. The dkit commands in the command palette, which you just put in dkit and it will list all of them. But most interesting ones was create dub package and create package from the dub pro uh, package file. The next one is the well-known VS Code, which applies to Visual Studio Code, VS Codeium, and Code OSS. It uses a plugin called Code-D, which is also used by other text editors. The plugin provides D language support using dub, DCD, DScanner, and DFormat. If you use dub init to create the project folder, then open that project folder as a workspace. It will auto-configure the dub task for you in the, in the task.json file. If not using dub, you just open the workplace folder and you have to configure your own default task, which is pretty easy because it's just a JSON file. Debugging with code D and then native debuggers plugin. You do need another plugin if you want to do debugging. It works okay. So here's a screenshot of the uh, Sublime Text. As you can see, it has a mini map in the panel at the bottom 
informs us that Dub did a debug build using DMD and that it linked successfully. You might notice that all of the projects are named after the whatever editor I was using. So this one says it was building Sublime Text Master. It's just uh, easier for me to keep track of everything that way. Three other ones that are in this category of only one D plugin would be the IntelliJet by JetBrains. You need to install it the D language plugin, which uses Dub to create the project, and everything else just works, including the debugger. If one uses the extended format debug argument, I was only able to use the reference compiler DMD. I'm assuming that the maintainer is going to add the other compilers someday. It, by default, compiles with the G debug switch, which doesn't work, so you have to use the GF switch. The next one is Synrite, which uh, surprised me a little bit. It's Windows only and comes with a DLexer plugin, which you have to install with the plugin manager. It does multi file project support. It needs to configure custom tools to call ex externals command prop, run the current file, compiling files, and building projects with dub. You can also custom tools for syntax check and style checks. There's no source control or debugging. The last one on this list is Emacs. And I must admit this, that this started out being the last editor on my list that I ever wanted to use. It is always and still baffles me, even with a cheat sheet. It's pretty much been a nemesis for me since I didn't grow up using it on Linux or Unix. However, the Demo plugin was really easy to add, and it added a, a D menu item. It's the only one you really have to use for D because Emacs by default loads a bunch of other plugins to take care of things. There's also a Git uh, plugin package, which I didn't try out. The compile menu item, however, runs make, and I didn't have much luck with the debugger plugin. So here's a screenshot of Synrite. You can see it, it also has symbol generation, a project folder panel, and syntax highlighting. And if you look at the bar down at the bottom, it has version control, to-do list, problems, a terminal you can open, services. I'm not sure what that is, but it's set to compile with DMD right now, but you can set it to compile with any of the compilers. So now we're going to talk about uh, code editors that are really simple to configure and or they have like one plugin to add something, but it's not a D specific plugin. They are already configured to do D programming by default. The first one we're going to talk about is gedit, which is just the, the old GNOME editor. I think this can also be installed on Windows. I'm not quite sure about that. It is used on Linux though. Its highlighting mode is auto detected by file extension, but there's no code folding in the tools menu to create menu items for external tools to add extension specific or global tools with menu item to build the project or compile and run the file or open a terminal. You have to add a, a plugin to make snippets. That's the extra plugin. The other one on here is the old Jenny ID from Linux, which is actually installable on Windows also. Comes configured for the D language and has almost everything an IDE needs. Even debugging work if, if the custom debug compiler is configured with the GF argument. Of course, using the default debug compile configuration causes the GDB debugger to skip the breakpoints and exit the program unless the get car function is used to hold the terminal open. The default build commands are configured to use make. Also, custom Custom build commands can be configured to use dub instead. One also can configure custom compile commands using any of the available three compilers. You need to install a plugin to have source control. Notepad++ is one, this one is Windows only. However, on Linux, this editor is called Notepad PP and very much is the same as the one on Windows. It can run any executable from a menu item on the run menu. You can open from a menu item either an internal or external terminal. It handles multiple file editing and is usable for many programming languages. It also has no compile build or debugging integrated in the editor and you need a plugin for source control. So this is the uh, screenshot of Jenny. You can see it has symbol generation and the document panels and a compiler panel that you can hardly read, but basically it says that it compiled successfully. Other code editors in the same uh, group are, uh, include code blocks, which is an old Linux uh, C, C++ IDE, which has been configured to run many different languages, including D, and it also uh, can be installed on Windows. The IDE comes configured for the D projects, but the configuration in the new version, it's actually the newest version that just released, 
does not work. I could not create a D project on Linux, although I could create D products on Windows, but I got linking errors on building. The version just before the latest version, however, worked just great. It can create a custom tool to compile and run dub projects and compile D files and configure projects for D projects. The next one is called Kate. It's only available on Linux. It has syntax highlighting and code folding built in for D. The internal terminal opens in project folder of the file opened. You can create a Kate project file in the project folder with custom build commands on the menu, like dub run for the default build menu item. Code completion and debugging works okay. Symbols are generated using the D language server, which is out of date, but still works okay. And it uses Git for source control. The last one on this slide is JEdit. It's available on Windows and Linux. There's no specific plugin available for D. There was a plugin for debugging, and there's a source control plugin. There's also a plugin to run the console with compile and run commands, but it doesn't have a build menu item. So it just basically has highlighting and cold folding built in. And this is a screenshot of Kate. You can see it has a symbol generation, and the bottom panel is a result of a dub run, which by default ran 2,000 digits of precision, so you can only see the last four or five lines because it's a big number. The next we're going to not talk about code editors that require multiple plugins and multiple configuration changes. I'm not going to talk about these because my assumption is that only programmers who use these on a regular basis already and really want to code D in them are going to take the time to configure them. I left the slides with the talking points in so that they will be included in the video and PDF of the slides that are made available. The first three are variations of the old Linux VI editor, which runs in a console, and these all three run in a console. Vim is short for modified VI, VI or modern VI, depending on who you talk to. NeoVim is the name for the new and more modern Vim. GVim is the name for the graphic Vim for, and it runs on Linux and Windows. And it's just a Vim in a GUI window with a menu and a toolbar. This is a screenshot of NeoVim. It's configured as per instructions on the D for Vim wiki page on D Lang's website. It took eight plugins and a page and a half of a VI script to get this configured. As you can see, it has the nerd tree project folder on the left, and it has the tag bar symbol generation on the right. It has the main editing window. The interesting thing is that you can have relative line numbers, which is a little bit hard to get used to. Of course, the terminal is just below that, and you can run anything in the terminal because you're basically in a terminal because that menu bar up there is actually for the for the console, not for the NeoVim. And it also has the my default background color for the console. So we know it's running in the console. The last two editors, but we're not going to talk about them either. TextPad is the first thing I install on every Windows computer I've had since the late 90s. I have configured it to compile files in every programming class taken except for Advanced Java where we use Eclipse because we were doing GUI programming and Visual Basic where we use Visual Studio. And the last is the Zeus editor for Windows, which is proprietary and I have a license to use it. I haven't, I seldom use it anymore because I don't program on Windows very much. So there's a screenshot of TextPad with its tools configuration dialog open and then there's a screenshot of the actual tools menu with the custom tools I made for the deprogramming language and then here's a screenshot of the Zeus editor which has a very detailed symbol generation which it calls classes which didn't work when I first started but with a little help from the uh, lead developer and customer support person and all around nice guy it took two weeks with back and forth emails on a daily basis to get the symbol generation to work correctly basically he had to re-edit all the uh, python files that triggered dcd to generate the symbols all the triggers had to be changed from python 2 to python 3 because python 2 has uh, been discontinued as you can see we did actually also get the debugger working thanks to some help from the forum although uh, the lead developer did admit that the debugger was actually from an old 32-bit big win project so he was surprised we could even get it working as well as we did so here's the summary chart i promised you it has them all on there and sorry we have no quiz today but thank you very much for listening and goodbye